hello. In this video, we are going to be looking at the five lowest energy states of the quantum harmonic oscillator. In particular, their probability densities and comparing them to the classical turning points of a classical harmonic oscillator that happens to have the same energies as the quantum harmonic oscillator in the stage from n equals zero to n equals five. In this figure, we see the left and right limits of the vibration classically for uh, quantum numbers for the quantum harmonic oscillator going from n equals zero to n equals five. So if it actually were acting classically, these would be the limits of the displacement from the equilibrium bond length. Here is the probability density for the n equals zero ground state. And notice that the bond spends most of its time right around its equilibrium length, which is the complete opposite of what you would have for a classical oscillator, where it spends most of its time at the extremes and only a very short amount of time uh, in the middle. Notice also that we have the uh, vertical black lines showing the classical turning points the limits uh, the oscillator would have had if it acted completely classically. Again, for the n equals zero ground state, but now we have shaded in gray uh, when the oscillator is beyond the classical limit, it's forbidden limit, and the red probability is the probability that is within the classical limit. Here is the first excited state, n equals one. And we notice now, curiously, that the um, bond spends virtually none of its time at the equilibrium length. It's going to be almost entirely either shorter or longer. And we see uh, the black vertical lines, which show us the limits for the uh, classical oscillator with the same energy as the quantum oscillator for the n equals one state. Here are the probabilities for the n equals one state. The area shown in gray is the forbidden probability and the allowed probability classically is shown uh, highlighted in Here is the probability density for the n equals two state as a function of the displacement from the equilibrium bond length. And also shown as the vertical black lines, we see the classical turning point, the classical limits for that displacement. Here again, for n equals two, the forbidden regions are shown in gray, and the classically allowed regions are shown highlighted in red. Here we have for the n equals three state, again, highlighting the uh, classical limits, the turning points shown as the vertical black line.
here for the n equals 3 state. We see the forbidden region shaded in gray and the allowed region shown in red. And the probabilities are proportional to the areas, the integrals under these curves. Here is the fifth and final uh, state that we're going to look at, the n equals 4 state. Now for the n equals 4 state, the forbidden regions are shown shaded in gray. The allowed regions are shown in red. And notice as n gets larger, the shape of the uh, filled in red regions more and more closely approximates a parabola, which would be the situation for a classical oscillator. So here we see the correspondence theorem, how as the quantum number gets very, very large, the uh, properties start to approach those of classical mechanics. And here we repeat again one more time the um, classical turning points plotted as a function of the quantum number n. And we notice this parabolic shape for the classical case. And we notice how the uh, quantum harmonic oscillator approaches this value as n gets sufficiently large. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Stay healthy, stay safe, and as always, have a good one.